Story 1. John Stapp, an Air Force doctor, was convinced that more pilots could survive if their seats didn't disintegrate on crash landings. He proved it by strapping himself into a rocket sled, similar to those used in Mythbusters, and surviving. His work led to safer planes and cars. By riding the decelerator sled, Stapp demonstrated that a human can withstand at least 46.2 G in the forward position with adequate harnessing. This is the highest known acceleration voluntarily encountered by a human, set on December 10, 1954. Stapp reached a speed of 632 miles per hour, 1,017 kilometers per hour, which broke the land speed record and made him the fastest man on Earth. Story 2. Famous writer Roald Dahl, known for Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, the BFG, and James and the Giant Peach, developed and patented a surgical device to treat children with traumatic brain injuries. Dahl had no medical training, he just did it. Dahl's four-year-old son was injured in a car accident and developed dangerous pressure on his brain due to swelling. Surgeons installed a shunt in Dahl's son's skull to drain fluid and relieve pressure, but it kept clogging. There was no better solution on the market, so Dahl worked with a toy maker to design a new shunt that drained fluid without clogging. Dahl was able to patent the design, and it was subsequently used to treat thousands of children. Story 3. The man who invented the automatic switchboard, which is used to connect calls without the need for a person to physically move a cable, did so because his funeral home was not getting any customers. The lady operating the switchboard was the wife of his rival and was redirecting the calls to her husband's business. Instead of complaining to the phone company, which would have probably resulted in her getting fired if they found sufficient evidence, he took matters into his own hands and made her entire job obsolete. Story 4. Dr. Tracy Dixon Salazar, who pursued her PhD in neurobiology because her daughter was experiencing seizures and no one could explain why this was happening or how to treat her daughter, found a treatment when no one else could. An incredible woman. Story 5. Dr. Barry Marshall for infecting himself with Helicobacter pylori to prove they were the cause of ulcers. He earned a Nobel Prize for his efforts. Seriously, go watch old TV shows and movies. There's always some guy chugging Pepto or taking ulcer medicine because they're five minutes past the deadline. Dr. Marshall killed the billion-dollar ulcer medicine industry. Story 6. The woman delivered her own baby through cesarean section. I guess she has several children and knew the baby was in distress, but her husband was at the bar. So, she took a shot of alcohol and delivered the baby. They all lived, even the husband. Story 7. John Walsh's son was abducted from a Sears in 1981, and his decapitated head was found two weeks later. The rest of his body was never found. They were never able to pin the murder on anyone. John Walsh got involved in victim advocacy and started America's Most Wanted, helping capture more than 1,000 criminals, some of which were on the Federal Bureau of Investigation's Most Wanted list. It was eventually determined, with minimal evidence, that a serial killer named Otis Toole was Adam's killer. To this day, department stores commonly have a code Adam, named after Walsh's son, to help locate children who were lost or abducted from public spaces. Edit. Adam Walsh was six when he was abducted and murdered. Story 8. General Vladimir Pikalov did not want his men exposed to radiation during the Chernobyl disaster, so he personally drove around the perimeter of the power plant to get exact radiation levels, exposing himself to 137 REMs. Many people think that this was just a part of the show, but this man really made a necessary sacrifice and should be acknowledged as a hero. Story 9. North Korea attempted to hack someone who used to do cybersecurity for the Department of Defense in an attempt to steal some of his hacking software. He notified the Federal Bureau of Investigation and after waiting a year for nothing to come of it, he decided to hack into servers and routers of North Korea and effectively took down their internet as well as virtually all of their sites for many days. Story 10. The individual who invented rubber gloves for surgeons was a doctor whose nurse, also his spouse, was suffering from contact dermatitis due to the chemicals used to create an antiseptic environment. So, he designed some rubber gloves and requested Goodyear to manufacture them for him, inadvertently inventing the beginning of aseptic surgery in the process. Story 11. In 1959, Dushrath Manji's wife died from injuries resulting from trying to cross the mountain to access the closest hospital. 
There was no road, so he, over the course of more than two decades with a hammer and chisel, moved the mountain. His country, India, made a postage stamp with his face on it. He swore vengeance on a mountain and won. Story 12. The Germans scored a direct hit on an M10 tank destroyer, setting it alight and forcing the crew to abandon it. Murphy ordered his men to retreat to positions in the woods, remaining alone at his post, shooting his M1 carbine, and directing artillery fire via his field radio while the Germans aimed fire directly at his position. Murphy mounted the abandoned, burning tank destroyer and began firing its .50 caliber machine gun at the advancing Germans, killing a squad crawling through a ditch towards him. For an hour, Murphy stood on the flaming tank destroyer, returning German fire from foot soldiers and advancing tanks, killing or wounding 50 Germans. He sustained a leg wound during his stand and stopped only after he ran out of ammunition. Murphy rejoined his men, disregarding his own injury, and led them back to repel the Germans. He insisted on remaining with his men while his wounds were treated. He was 19 years old when this occurred. Story 13. John von Neumann was one of the greatest mathematicians of all time. However, he was consistently frustrated by physicists' inability to construct a functioning computer for his calculations. So in 1945, he essentially said, forget it, just do this, and described the architecture that is fundamentally the basis of all modern computers. This design is referred to as von Neumann architecture. He was also involved in the Manhattan Project, a pioneer of game theory, and conducted analyses that anticipated the discovery of the structure of DNA. He was an absolute giant in terms of intellect. Story 14. An English doctor, Edward Jenner, noticed that milkmaids who had caught cowpox, a close genetic relative of smallpox with significantly reduced virulence, did not seem to catch smallpox when outbreaks would occur. As a result, he hypothesized to other physicians that infection with cowpox could be used to prevent smallpox, but they did not buy it and essentially laughed him out of the room. Jenner proceeded to infect his gardener's eight-year-old son with cowpox and, after the boy recovered, exposed him to smallpox repeatedly, effectively demonstrating his initial hypothesis to the initially skeptical medical community. Jenner's On the Origin of the Vaccine Inoculation, wherein he published his results, set the foundation for the first smallpox vaccine and, eventually, the eradication of the disease altogether. Story 15. Newton Inventing Calculus He was trying to solve problems that were unsolvable or very tedious to solve. Instead of trying to solve them with the help of his peers, he simply invented a new branch of mathematics to solve them. And then he basically discarded his invention after he achieved his goal because he moved on to other problems. Later, there were rumblings about a new way to solve problems, and he's like, Oh yeah, I did that years ago. It's in some of my journals over there. Story 16. Of all the moments I do not see in this thread, I would say Catherine the Great's overthrow of her husband stands out. He was such an incompetent ruler that she decided to organize a military coup, which ended amazingly peacefully. Story 17. I've told this story before, but I went to the dentist many years ago to have a rotten tooth pulled. The dentist, who was highly skilled and qualified, numbed me up, grabbed the pliers, attached them to the tooth and pulled. Nothing happened. It didn't help that she was pretty small and simply didn't have the strength to do it. She apologized and said she would go and get a more robust colleague, but I would have to wait for half an hour since the other dentist was out at lunch. I said forget that, I would do it myself. So. She placed the pliers over my tooth. I checked with her about five times that it was the correct tooth and gave it an almighty yank. Finally, out popped the tooth. It turns out the reason it was so stubborn was that it had three roots instead of just two. Anyway, I got a discount of two pounds 50 pence for doing the job myself. Story 18, Shuji Nakamura inventing the blue LED. Basically, making the blue LED was a hard problem, and only having red and green means we couldn't have the full spectrum of colors like we have for TVs today. Nakamura was tasked with this research and, through the journey, had people dismiss him for not having a PhD at the time and doubting him for pursuing a different method of LED manufacturing, which eventually did lead to success. He was also ordered to stop working on the problem by his company but did it anyway. The video by Veritasium explains it all perfectly and is worth the watch if you have the time. Story 19 
I don't know if it's the greatest in history, but after patiently waiting for my mom to explain things, at age 12, I went to the bookstore and bought my own How to Explain Sex to Your 10 to 12 Year Old. Good thing too, because I'm 46 now, and she still hasn't broached the subject. Story 20. Maybe not the greatest, but hilarious enough, I would put it fairly high. Lieutenant Spears' run through Foy in Band of Brothers is apparently true. Can't get orders to the other side of the city? All right, let me just run right through the German-occupied town and back. Story 21. Benedict Arnold and Horatio Gates were at odds during the Battle of Saratoga, with a deep-seated dislike for one another. Mid-battle, Gates relieved Arnold of his command. However, observing that the American counterattack was floundering, Arnold took initiative. He rode to the forefront, rallying the troops, markedly turning the tide of battle in favor of the Americans and leading to the eventual British surrender. During this valiant effort, Arnold sustained a severe injury. A bullet struck his left leg, which subsequently was crushed as his horse, too, was shot and fell. By the time Gates' messenger reached him with orders to return to headquarters, Arnold was incapacitated and had to be transported back on a stretcher. The discord between Gates and Arnold escalated after the battle, with Gates refusing to acknowledge Arnold's participation. Gates' political acumen garnered him the support of the Continental Congress, contributing significantly to Arnold's eventual act of treason. In contrast, Gates was later appointed to lead the Southern Army, where he led it to a major defeat and was subsequently removed from command. Post-war, when Arnold purportedly inquired about the consequences of his return to the United States, he was met with a stark response. He was told that a monument would be erected in honor of his left leg for its service, while the rest of him would be executed. Story 22. Barry Marshall, an incredible Australian doctor and microbiologist, got tired of other professionals discounting his theory that peptic ulcers are caused by bacteria and not stress. So, he infected himself with Helicobacter pylori bacteria, got an ulcer, then cured it with antibiotics. He won the Nobel Prize. What a boss! Story 23. Liu Bang was a minor functionary in Imperial China. He was once in charge of moving a group of prisoners from one location to another, but they escaped. The penalty for allowing this was death. Unsurprisingly, he felt this wasn't ideal. So he began a rebellion which ended with the fall of the five centuries old Qin dynasty. Following this, Lu became the Gaozu Emperor, founder of the Han Dynasty, and is considered one of the greatest Chinese emperors. Story 24 Betty White had a black man on her show who was a tap dancer. The people who owned the channel were not happy he was on it and threatened to cancel her show. So, she said, forget it, and gave the guy more screen time every show. Indeed, her show was canceled, but she went out on a high note, and the guy did not even know about it until recently. Story 25. Oh my word, I won't remember names here. The series Band of Brothers is based on true stories told by World War II veterans that were a part of Easy Company. You get to see them tell their story while a recreation of their telling is made into cinematic format. There was one point where there was a planned raid or battle of sorts. They had another group they were attacking with on the other side of a small town. The person in charge was supposed to call up the other company, but he ended up panicking and was unable to make the call. One of the soldiers was like, screw it, I'll do it myself. But no, not by calling them or getting their attention from a distance. This man instead ran toward the enemy line, past them and all the way to the other company and ran all the way back. The thing is, people usually have their guns aimed at a distance they don't expect someone to just wind up right next to them. I can also imagine that the enemy was a bit befuddled seeing this guy. He was untouched and was a hero that day. To see better details about this, read comments and look up Ronald Spears at Foy. The entire series is a flurry of brave individuals who did and dealt with unthinkable things. My favorite recounting is the Medic episode. I love that they spent an episode focusing on a medic and how incredibly tough it'd be to be one. Medics often end up being the soldiers that help the most, but see the most death of comrades. Story 26. When Bill Burr attacked the city of Philadelphia when all the comedians before him got booed off the stage. He sat there and did his 15 minutes and in all 15 minutes he roasted, burned, attacked, whatever you want to call it. 
Basically, he criticized the city of Philadelphia and everything it stood for. Story 27. Returning from his campaigns across the Indus River, Alexander the Great was marching towards home, sacking cities along the way, expanding his empire. One of the tribes, the Mali, pulled back into their walled city to concentrate their forces. They were strongly resisting along the walls, but Alexander was in the heart of the battle, leading his troops. At one point, Alexander was on the wall, just he and his closest retainers, his shield bearers, and saw an opportunity to enter the city. He jumped from the wall, almost alone amongst the enemy, to press the attack. His troops hadn't advanced as far as he had and weren't able to join him. Seeing his impetuous leap, his men panicked and stormed their ladders so quickly they broke, leaving him alone in an enemy stronghold, fighting them off. His troops would eventually join him, but for a time it was Alexander the Great and his shield-bearer's backs, against a tree holding off the forces of an entire city.